The zebra mussel invasion of North America began around 1986 when intercontinental freighters dumped mussel-infested ballast water into Lake St. Clair. Adult mussels were first discovered in Lake St. Clair in the summer of 1988. Since that time, they have spread throughout the Great Lakes Basin and beyond. Once zebra mussels infest natural aquatic systems, they cannot be eliminated, at least not with our current technology. The very best way to avoid the effects of zebra mussels on natural systems is to prevent them from arriving in the first place. Although it's very difficult to limit their spread when it occurs naturally, such as when larvae are carried downstream in river currents, there are a number of methods for reducing the accidental spread caused by people. Perhaps the most common way that people spread zebra mussels is by transporting mussel-infested boats, trailers, fishing gear, bait buckets, or other equipment from one water body to another. For example, these aquatic weeds have attached zebra mussels. If they're not removed from the trailer and are transported to another lake, that lake could then become infested with mussels. It's important that recreational water users become familiar with a few precautionary steps if we are to stand a chance against this aggressive freshwater invader. In the case of recreational boating, you should always inspect your boat, trailer, and boating equipment, such as anchors, center boards, rollers, axles, motor mounts, trim tabs, and transducers for evidence of zebra mussels. Before leaving the water body, remove any plants and animals that are visible, and be sure to drain water from the motor, live well, bilge, and transom wells. Empty bait buckets on land, and dispose of unused bait in trash containers. Never release unused live bait into a water body, or transfer aquatic animals from one water body to another. Some aquatic nuisance species can survive out of the water for five days. Under optimal conditions, some species can even live out of the water for more than two weeks. Therefore, it's important to thoroughly rinse your boat and equipment with hot tap water that is at least 104 degrees Fahrenheit, or spray your boat, trailer, and equipment with high water pressure. This can be done at home or on your way home. An alternative to washing is to dry your boat and equipment for at least five days before transporting to another water body. The steps outlined here apply to more than just boats and boating equipment. For example, mussel larvae have been found in or on personal watercraft, duck hunting equipment, fishing waders, seaplane pontoons, and scuba gear, to name just a few. Successful prevention of the spread of zebra mussels means learning to identify them and understanding their potential to colonize. In addition to the problems recreational water users and aquatic ecosystems might experience, the zebra mussel is also troublesome to industries and municipal water suppliers that use raw water from zebra mussel infested lakes and rivers. External services that are exposed to infested water can become encrusted with mussels. Each year, a new crop can settle on top of the established colony, sometimes resulting in layers many inches thick. In some cases, this can present serious problems as water supplies to the facility may eventually be cut off. In addition to external surfaces, internal piping may also become fouled and even blocked with zebra mussels. This occurs either when mussel larvae settle and mature inside pipes or when clumps of mussels break off from external surfaces and are transported into the piping system. The mussels and the sediment that gets trapped around the mussels can accumulate to the point where the flow of water to the facility becomes completely blocked. Along with obstructing water flow, colonies of mussels appear to increase corrosion. Heavy accumulations of shells and the high organic contact of zebra mussel feces and pseudofeces may result in anaerobic conditions on the surfaces that zebra mussels colonize. This may encourage growth of anaerobic bacteria, such as sulfate-reducing bacteria, which have been implicated in microbiologically influenced corrosion, or MIC. There are a number of ways to deal with zebra mussel infestations of industrial facilities. Some facilities are committed to preventing zebra mussel larvae from settling in critical piping systems and external structures. This is the proactive approach. Others allow their facility to be colonized by zebra mussels and only treat the system or surfaces after fouling has occurred. This is the reactive approach. Choosing the best and most economical treatment depends on the individual facility. Operators must ask themselves 
Can we operate with zebra mussels on our external structures or in our raw water systems? If the number of zebra mussels that are likely to accumulate in one or two seasons pose no particular threat, then the facility is a good candidate for some form of reactive treatment. The most common reactive methods for controlling zebra mussels include thermal shock, dehydration, freezing, oxygen deprivation, mechanical cleaning, and direct application of biocides. Thermal washing, thermal flushing, and steam cleaning are very effective methods for killing zebra mussels. Water temperature and exposure time required to kill the mussels vary depending on local environmental conditions. Local regulations governing discharge of heated water must also be taken into account when considering this method. In some circumstances, draining systems and either dehydrating or freezing the mussels by exposing them to environmental conditions can be an effective reactive method. Again, exposure time required to kill the mussels will vary depending on local environmental conditions. Depriving mussels of oxygen by adding an oxygen scavenging agent, such as sodium metabisulfite or sulfide gas into a closed system, is another effective reactive method. These chemicals reduce the dissolved oxygen within the system to levels that are eventually lethal to zebra mussels. Thermal shock, dehydration, freezing, and oxygen deprivation are all effective control treatments. However, they may require prolonged shutdowns, which disrupt production, and therefore can be quite costly. Additional drawbacks of the oxygen deprivation control method are that it may take up to two weeks to be effective if ambient temperatures are low. Decreases in oxygen may promote corrosion by anaerobic bacteria, and any water destined for surface water must be reoxygenated before its release. Mechanical methods used to remove zebra mussels from external surfaces and large diameter pipes may be done online in some cases, or would at most require only a short shutdown period. Scrapers, brushes, mechanical routers, and high and low volume water washes have all been used to mechanically clean zebra mussels with varying degrees of success. Use of biocidal chemicals to directly kill zebra mussels is another option for reactive control. Chlorine dioxide is an oxidizing chemical that can be made on site. It's already in use as a popular water treatment and bleaching chemical and has been shown to be an effective reactive control agent for zebra mussels. Use of oxidizing chemicals as reactive control agents, while effective, is not very efficient. That's because in the presence of these chemicals, zebra mussels close their shells and can keep them closed for up to two weeks. However, zebra mussels tend not to close their shells in the presence of non-oxidizing chemicals. This means that these chemicals can kill mussels within a matter of hours instead of the two to four weeks that it takes with oxidizing chemicals. The most commonly used non-oxidizing chemicals are proprietary molluscicides. Ammonium nitrate and a variety of potassium salts have also been used on a small scale. Most of these chemicals require detoxification prior to their release into surface waters. Regardless of which of these reactive methods is used, the mussels must then be collected and transported to a disposal site. Although mussels do bioaccumulate a variety of substances, in most cases, their toxicity levels are low enough to allow them to be used as compost or to be disposed of in a regular landfill. The alternative to reactive control is to prevent the zebra mussels from attaching in the first place. This is called proactive control. Proactive control can be achieved by either chemical or non-chemical methods. Non-chemical proactive methods of control include anti-fouling coatings, electrolytic protection, acoustics, infiltration and filtration, and ultraviolet light. Several commercially available coatings have been found to prevent mussels from colonizing surfaces. The best products for long-term fouling resistance, durability, and cost effectiveness tend to be low surface tension silicones or copper rich coatings. These coatings can be applied to external structures that are susceptible to muscle fouling and amenable to coating such as bar racks, pump wells, and screen wells. Local regulations should be consulted before applying these coatings. Both concrete and steel surfaces can be safeguarded by electrolytic protection. This method involves creating an electrical current on the surface that's to be protected. The electrical field discourages zebra mussels from settling. Electrolytic protection compares favorably to most coatings in price and is thought to remain effective for a longer period of time. 
pilot installations in the Great Lakes have effectively reduced settling on exposed surfaces by more than 80 percent. Acoustic energy, generated within a metallic structure, can prevent adult zebra mussels from settling and can cause mortality in juvenile mussels by producing intracellular vibrations, thus damaging their tissues. While small-scale tests suggest that acoustics could be used to protect both external surfaces and internal piping, there are no commercial devices available at this time. For new installations, infiltration galleries and sand filters offer total protection from zebra mussels. Intake volumes are limited, however, by the possible size of the infiltration gallery. Some systems can be fitted with commercially available mechanical filters with very fine screens and self-cleaning capabilities. These filters have been extremely successful in removing all zebra mussel post villagers from the raw water from 10 to 35 centimeter pipes. Filters for large diameter pipes are being developed. Ultraviolet radiation, or UV light, is an accepted technique to sterilize potable and swimming pool water. Recently, both low and medium pressure UV lamps have been shown to prevent primary settlement of zebra mussels. One limitation to the use of UV light is turbid water. Water made turbid by storms, for example, cannot be penetrated by light, especially ultraviolet light. Therefore, UV radiation may not be a reliable treatment unless extremely powerful lamps are used. The primary chemicals used for proactive zebra muscle control are oxidizing chemicals. Oxidants are effective in proactive control because they prevent muscle larvae from having the opportunity to settle and mature. Oxidants include chlorine, chlorine dioxide, bromine, chloramines, potassium permanganate, and ozone. These chemicals must be added to the system throughout the breeding season at levels ranging from 0.2 to 1.0 parts per million total residual oxidant. This does not result in acute mortalities of juvenile zebra mussels, but does prevent settling. Chlorine is probably the most effective and popular of these chemicals but formation of trihalomethanes, or THMs, may be a problem in some situations. Chlorine dioxide can be as effective as chlorine and doesn't form THMs. However, it may not be as practical when cost and ease of use are considered. Bromine can also be as effective as chlorine, but does form toxic brominated compounds, such as bromoform. Chloramines and potassium permanganate, in general, are less effective than chlorine and ozone produces effluents with generally lower toxicity because of ozone's high dissipation rate. Strict environmental laws regulate the discharge of oxidizing chemicals which are toxic to aquatic life. Therefore, all effluents must meet environmental standards before being discharged. Generally, each control measure has merit, but no one strategy works for all systems or locations. Each facility should use the controls most applicable to its situation. Regardless of the control method selected, monitoring is an integral part of any control program. Monitoring for zebra mussels is something that all the industries uh, start with, um, usually prior to the arrival of the zebra mussel in the affected area. And then once the zebra mussels have arrived, we tend to continue monitoring to find out just how long the mussels are breeding, when are they settling down, um, to help us decide how we're going to treat them. So we have, we're monitoring for first arrival, and that's usually with plankton nets or settling blocks. We monitor for how long the breeding season is and uh, how much settlement we're getting, and that's again plankton sampling of some sort uh, together with a settling block. And then we monitor inside the facility to make sure that whatever treatment we're doing is working. The key to zebra mussel control is knowing the extent to which your facility can become infested and knowing the extent of your facility's infestation, which is achieved through monitoring. Each facility should implement a comprehensive plan for minimizing the impact of zebra mussels on the facility while protecting the natural environment from the effects of control strategies. For more information on zebra mussel control, contact your local Sea Grant or Natural Resource Agency.